So let's talk about Lockdown Browser. So in this class, we are going to use Respondus Browser or Lockdown Browser mean monitoring to take the exams. And the meaning of that is that you have to solve the problems in a special browser. It's uh, basically like Chrome or Safari or uh, Microsoft Edge, but it's a different browser. It's called Respondus Lockdown Browser that once you open it, it locks you in that application. Basically, you cannot change uh, screens or Windows to other applications like Chrome or Edge or Safari or Adobe Acrobat. It basically only allows you to open a single tab in which you open Blackboard, of course, Stony Brook Blackboard, and you are going to take the exam. Okay. So once you open that specific browser, you go to Blackboard, you go to Assignments, where we have also as the last post uh, test. And you click on the test, which will bring you to basically the test. Uh, you don't need a password or anything else because it lets you get into the test because you open the lockdown browser. OK, I cannot show that because uh, Car, I mean, it's enabled with Lockdown Browser. I cannot record and uh, show you the Lockdown Browser. But basically, this test contains four questions that you have to respond. And you don't have to. Basically, you can put test, test, test as the result, as the solution for every problem, and then submit. Uh, but the Lockdown Browser also has a feature called monitoring, which basically records the uh, face of the person that uh, takes the exam. And it shows me that you are indeed the one that took the exam, nobody else. You didn't use, it starts by asking you to show that in front of you, there are no uh, notes or anything else that basically can be used for academic dishonesty. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can take the test, but probably I cannot take the test because uh, currently you need to use the lockdown browser to, uh, to, to do the test. But basically what the test contains are four sample problems in which you have to build in three of them truth tables and in the last one, uh, symbolic proof. And actually the moment that you submit your results, you will get all of these results. Basically, you can see what you entered and what was the correct solution that I developed for that specific example, for that specific problem. The result of this, I will not get much into it, but the result of this is that in the Lockdown Browser tool, I will be able to actually see uh, that you took the exam yourself and some people already took this exam, so I will I can actually see that you took the exam, how long it took you, and so on. It also tells me if there were issues in that specific uh, uh, exam taking, if you consulted your cell phone or if you left the uh, seat during the exam and things like that. You can leave to go to, let's say, the restroom, but uh, I have to make sure that you are not copying or something like that during the exam. Okay. And there are many other settings that I put in the lockdown browser. For instance, you have only 60 minutes that you can take the exam and uh, you have to start within a certain time. Now, I didn't enable that for the lockdown browser today. So today I only uh enabled uh, basically the 60 minutes to complete the exam and i can put special rules for those of those students that uh, basically the uh, office of uh, accessibility requires me to give different time for the exam but for the real exam at the time that the exam starts you can open you can open the assignments and the exam will appear and it will disappear the moment that the exam time ends. So it will automatically submit the exam if you run out of time. I assume that you will have a clock somewhere so you can time yourself uh, when you take the exam. Okay. And I posted on Piazza 
how to install the lockdown browser. So basically you go to softweb.cc.stonybrew.edu, it will ask you for your net ID and password, and then you download the Respondus lockdown browser, and you take this test. You can do it after the lecture and the recitation today. That's why I put 1.30, but I left it open for the entire day. So I actually, I don't remember me actually make it disabled after 24 hours. So you have to test it because basically uh, two weeks from now, when you take the real exam, if we do have a problem, I can't do anything anymore. So if you cannot take the exam with monitoring, I cannot give you a grade for this class. And this problem will pop will propagate with the current pandemic for much longer than that. Okay, so let's see if there are any questions. Any questions from anyone about lockdown browser with monitoring the practice test that you have to test today is not graded. Again, all that you have to do is try it, submit at the end see if it works like basically i will email you at the end of the week uh, i don't see a recording for you like for instance there was a student that tried the lockdown browser but i see no video so uh, i will say that something must be wrong okay okay any questions i assume that most of the students in the class actually used lockdown browser last semester uh to take uh, midterms and finals so this probably is not new for many of you it might be new for a few students that's why we are testing it okay. um i have yes. a question about what happens if um during an actual exam uh something like happens like um your internet goes out or something like that what are you supposed to do in that circumstance Okay, so that's the most difficult issue. And last semester, what I did, I left uh, Google Meet on. So basically, it allowed me to uh, communicate with students that were kicked out from the exam. And then uh, they came to Google Meet to let me know that something happened. What you can do in that case, and I have basically what I'm doing on my end, I will make a special rule for you that you can get back into the exam. It only happened in two cases out of, uh, I had about 300 students enrolled in my classes. So it doesn't happen, happen often, but if it does happen, I will let you back into the exam, which means that you basically get to the back, back to the same uh, submission that you are making so you see the problems by the way i will make the problems visible one by one which basically means that you can save and go to the next question or go back to the previous question so it lets you when you come back you maybe lose only the current question that you were responding to if god forbid the internet fails but it doesn't happen often. If it does happen, we have a solution for it. Basically, that you get back into the exam after you discuss with me on the Google Meet for the class, and I make a special rule for you that you can get back into the exam. And you continue your submission from the time that you left, uh, that you were kicked out of the exam, which I totally understand it happens, and uh, there is a solution for it. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay. So if there are no more questions, then um, I can stop. Me? Oh, go ahead. Uh, so I want to know, like, if there, if I have a confusion for the exam question itself, like, say, there's a question that uh, may cause confusion. Uh, how am I supposed to, I can you I? You cannot. So I do understand that that's an issue, but for any standardized test like SAT or GRE, uh, you basically the questions are self-contained. You are asked a question that basically has all of the information necessary for you to solve that problem. And I will do my questions that way. Make I will make sure that there is no issue 
like if I'm asking for a question, it was in the lecture notes and uh, you are supposed to know. So basically the only reason that you don't know what it means is because you didn't uh, learn that material from the lecture notes. So my point is that unfortunately, this is exactly like one of those exams taken in the accessibility office where there is no TA or instructor available. You are given the exam with all of the information that is available. You take that exam, everybody does exactly the same. So everybody's in the same boat and you submit at the end. And basically you cannot ask questions during the exam. This is the only option that we have. Some professors last semester chose that there are alternatives like you can open Zoom and you are on Zoom with the professor and on the cell phone and uh, uh, in the exam uh, on your laptop. But standardized tests and most tests that you will take, you are the only one taking it. So if the, and I guarantee you that in my exams, if you don't know something in the exam, you were supposed to know that in the exam. And I can tell you after the exam uh, where you can find it in the lecture notes. And that's that's it. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Other um, questions? Can yeah. you answer the questions in chat? Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, I was still looking at the premises. I think he's using the fact that P plus is equivalent not P or Q. Yeah, that's uh, a logical equivalence that is true. The P in this case is the entire function that you can see he negated it. So I assume that this was an earlier question and uh, Nelson responded to Matthew. So I, I assume that is true. I don't exactly remember the uh, situation. Does abduction only work if it's a big conditional? No, abduction is a different type of uh, using logic, and we're not going to get into this, this class. But you are kind of right. Basically, what uh, a technique that is used in logic programming is called Clark completion. That if you are given a set of rules that can be used to infer a single conclusion, you can write a logical formula that uses B conditional, that you say that either of these premises must be equivalent with the conclusion. We are not going to get into that in this class. We are not going to talk about abduction in this class, but it's a very good question. So if you want to know more about that, I can tell you during office hours. Okay, Tina asked a question that is related to the exam. Can we use scrap paper during the exam? And the answer is yes. So if you show at the beginning that the scrap paper that you are using is empty on both sides, then you can use it. So one or two pieces of paper would definitely suffice. I personally would probably just uh, write in notepad and uh, or in, in the text area that is provided. And really the reason for that is that you're wasting time. You are given, let's say 10 problems in 80 minutes or two hours. You don't have time to do it first on paper and then on the computer, but you can. You, I, I let you use scrap paper during the exam, okay? It's just that we cannot grade it. So in this exam, we can only grade the submissions that you make in the text areas in the exam, I, I cannot uh, basically grade scanned papers for almost 100 students in this class in six weeks. And considering that we have to grade homeworks, 600 homeworks uh, or 500 homeworks, and then another 300 for exams, problems for the exams. So it's, we cannot do it. So. Basically, you can use scrap paper, but it's really scrap paper. You show that it's white at the beginning and you can throw it away after the exam or keep it for reference. Any other questions? 
Okay, so then I will stop the recording and post it separately.